Well, hi everyone. Today I wanna to talk about a very interesting dam and reservoir project in Colorado. This dam is the largest dam that's been constructed in the United States in the last 25 years at a height of 350 feet. And I'm gonna go through the details of this construction. Again, I think it's very interesting, but unfortunately, uh, the accomplishment of achieving the final topping out of this embankment in July of 2025, I'm recording this on August 23rd, 2025, it was revealed in early June that the water that collects in the reservoir, I say collects it, it's gonna be pumped in, but there's uh, rainwater that had collected in the coffer dam and it tested for higher than permissible levels for uranium in uh, EPA drinking standards. So it's, it's to me a very shocking development that's I think been significantly downplayed by the project owners and others involved with this project. So this is a $570 million dam project. It's located to the west of Fort Collins, Colorado. Let's take a look at the Google Earth image here. We'll zoom in on the project location. So you can see the dam under construction. The material that was used to produce the dam, the rock fill shells, the asphalt, the concrete, were all produced in an upstream quarry that's gonna be located within the reservoir area of the dam. Now it's an interesting project because as with a lot of places in the West, the water is in one place and most of the people are in another place. And so here's the continental divide. Precipitation that falls to the west of this divide flows to the Pacific Ocean and water that falls to the east of this line flows to the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean, depending how far east you are. And in the case of Colorado, 80% of the water that's available is located where 20% of the people live. So they need to have these projects, these reservoirs, these tunnels, these uh, pumping systems to get water from the western side of the Continental Divide to the eastern side where most of the people live. So let's look at this Chimney Hollow Dam. Over 12 million cubic yards of embankment fill material, rock fill shells, it's a zoned embankment, has a very interesting asphaltic core, low permeability zone at the central portion of the dam. This reservoir will hold 90,000 acre feet of water when it's full. As I mentioned, this is the largest dam that's been constructed in the United States in the last 25 years, ever since the completion of Seven Oaks Dam. And in my early engineering career, I was involved with the design and construction observations for dams and levee projects throughout uh, the United States. And I actually worked on Seven Oaks Dam in the early 90s. Uh, I was working for Black & Veatch at the time, and they had a contract to set up the Quality Assurance Laboratory on-site laboratory for the Corps of Engineers. It's a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers project. And the lab was responsible for conducting in situ field density tests of the rock fill, the clay core, uh, gradation tests, and so on. So it's a very interesting project. So I was interested to see that this Chimney Hollow Dam is the biggest dam project uh, in terms of height uh, since the time of Seven Oaks. Now the prime contractor is Barnard, out of Montana. Stantec is the designer and Black and & Veatch is the construction manager for this project. So this is part of the Colorado Big Thompson project system. It's a series of reservoirs and tunnels, again designed to get water from the western side of the Continental Divide to the eastern side of the Continental Divide. So I'm going to let this water resource manager with Northern Water explain how they get water to the Chimney Hollow Dam. So Windy Gap is a junior water right on the Colorado River uh, downstream of Lake Grand Bay. And we pump water from Windy Gap up into Lake Grand Bay. And from there, it's carried in excess capacity in the CBT system to the East Slope where we deliver it to participants. And then starting this year, uh, we'll be able to put it into storage in Chimney Hollow Reservoir. So Northern Water was supposed to start first filling of this reservoir in August 2025. And I haven't seen any confirmation that that in fact has started. And again, I think a complicating factor is this discovery of uranium leaching into the water in the reservoir area. And I'll go over that in more detail. 
But again, this is an aerial shot of the dam. Most of the photos in the upstream area, you can see there's extensive uh, borrow operations, quarry operations, materials processing going on to produce the various materials used in the dam construction. And the press release from Northern Water indicated that they had actually discovered this concentration of uranium that exceeded EPA guidelines well over a year ago. So as elevated levels of uranium were first detected in samples taken in May 2023 during emergency discharges from the site caused by unusually heavy rainfall. It says, although uranium monitoring has been ongoing since December 2021 under a construction site discharge permit, it had not previously been a concern due to consistently low levels. In response to the emergency discharge, Northern Water proactively initiated additional water quality sampling, which led to the detection of elevated uranium levels, specifically 225 micrograms per liter, which is 225 parts per billion, in a sample collected from the site. So I'll continue on with this statement here from Northern Water. However, this initial detection did not fully reveal the scope of the issue. Uranium levels throughout the remainder of 2023 and into early 2024 were only episodically elevated and returned to lower levels after the initial spike. Because the source of the uranium was unknown and the elevated levels were not sustained, the issue did not appear to be ongoing at that time. Then they had another emergency discharge in 2024 from the site and saw consistently higher concentrations of uranium. So then they got more in depth in terms of their investigation and they didn't identify the source of the uranium until early 2025 when they realized it was from naturally occurring uranium within the granitic rock that was quarried in the upstream reservoir area to build the dam. So the exposure of these rocks after the quarrying operation and then the rocks that are exposed on the upstream shell of the dam apparently had uranium leaching into the water. So why did they go from determining the source of this uranium contamination in early January to not really telling anybody as far as I can tell until their press release of June of 2025. Now I'm gonna play this next segment from a local news report. Again, I've got the links to all these sources in the description to this video. Northern Water Public Information Officer Jeff Stala says after finding the uranium in 2023 water samples, it took a year to find it was coming from these rock layers. That there's a very slight amount of uranium in those rocks. Jeff says they are going to fill the reservoir with water in August, but they don't plan on using the reservoir for drinking water until at least 2027. The reservoir at Chimney Hollow is actually not connected to any water uh, treatment plant right now. They're working on treatment methods. 2025, as we start to fill, it's giving us the opportunity to look at options. Well, like they say, every problem is an opportunity, I suppose. They're really downplaying the significance of this development. Again, I don't want to be alarmist. I think they will figure out how to deal with this issue. They're waiting to see if filling of the reservoir will dilute the uranium levels to acceptable limits. The EPA limit is 30 parts per billion, and they've had testing in excess of 220 parts per billion in some of their samples. So it may be that subsequent washing, if you will, of the exposed rock in the reservoir area will over time lower those concentrations. A number of water treatment plants throughout Colorado do have filters to remove uh, the uranium from the water, or at least to reduce its concentration. But again, it's striking to me that this information wouldn't have come to light much earlier in the planning process for this project. This, this project's been in the works for over 30 years. The construction's occurred over the last four years. So again, you wouldn't have expected an issue per se with water collecting upstream of the coffer dam. A coffer dam is a temporary dam that's used to hold storm water to keep the actual work area of the main dam from flooding during construction. And it was the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation that was responsible for doing the environmental impact study that was published in 2011. And they didn't apparently test for potential uranium concentrations in the water used to fill this reservoir. The two big dam owners in the United States from a federal standpoint is the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and they have different missions. The Bureau of Reclamation is 
responsible for water supply for the most part. The Corps of Engineers are mostly responsible for flood control. And I used to work for the Corps of Engineers early in my career. I worked for them for five years. And uh, they're very thorough, very conservative. They can be infuriating to work with, actually, uh, as a consultant, I found in, in later years, just because they're, they're very rigid in their ways. But they're also known to have a high degree of safety and thoroughness associated with their projects. And the track record with the Bureau uh, isn't as good, unfortunately, if you go back to the Teton Dam failure and, and other issues that they've had on some of their projects. And again, perhaps I'm biased because I work for the Corps and not for the Bureau. But again, I think this is a major miss, uh, not only with the Bureau of Reclamation in terms of the uranium uh, concentrations in the reservoir level or potentially over time, but also with Northern Water and their consultants who were responsible for the design aspects of this project. So I was curious, how common is it to test the rocks in terms of leachate for the potential for contamination of reservoir water for a water supply dam? And I found this study from some Chinese researchers. This was November 2022. And they did exactly that. They tested and modeled for potential contaminants in the reservoir water. So let's look at this schematic of the dam construction area. You can see this uh, pinkish red zone. That's the area of the main embankment. This blue area represents the water that could be impounded by the coffer dam, which again is a, think of it as a temporary dam. And then you should see the main quarry area in gray. Let's look at some of this quarry operation. So they're loading up these triple seven wagons. So these triple seven wagons have a payload of over 120 tons of rock. And this operation was going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They produced over 60,000 tons of rock each day. You can see they're drilling and blasting for the on-site quarry. And they're using the granitic rocks for their borrow material. This is a picture of the coffer dam, 50 foot tall, earthen embankment. Now, obviously they took numerous cores of the foundation rocks, as well as the rocks that were going to be used for the onsite quarry. And apparently there wasn't any leachate testing as it were, where you basically soak the, the rock or the core in water, and then you test the water sample for various contaminants. That apparently wasn't done based on the reports, which is surprising because Granitics can lead to various types of contaminants in water. You can have radioactive elements such as radon, uranium, radium, and also you can have inorganic elements that are toxic in higher concentrations of arsenic and fluoride. And uh, as noted here, these contaminants are naturally present in the granite and can leach into groundwater over time, or they could leach into surface water or the reservoir water impounded by a dam. This is a rendering of what the dam will look like once completed and filled to capacity. Again, 90,000 acre feet of water at the maximum reservoir level. Embankment height, maximum height of 350 feet. Over 12 million cubic yards of material was used in the placement of the dam. So let's look at the cross section here. It's a zoned embankment. You have upstream and downstream rock fill shells. You have bigger rock that's used for wave protection or the riprap. And then you have granular transition zones on either side of the low permeability asphaltic core. And then you have a grout curtain that extends below the base of the core into the foundation rock to a depth of 280 feet. So these measures in terms of a low permeability core and the grout curtain are installed to reduce seepage losses of the reservoir water. One interesting thing about this dam is they constructed what's called a plinth, which is an 18 inch thick reinforced concrete slab that has rock anchors extending from the slab into the foundation rock and they also grouted through this plinth to seal off fractures and openings in the foundation bedrock to again, limit the amount of seepage uh, water that would be lost 
from the reservoir. So very interesting project. This plinth also helped to provide confining pressure when they were uh, grouting the foundation rock. So this plinth goes across the full axis of the dam. Here's a view of that asphaltic core, three and a half feet wide. It was placed with a paving machine. There's only two dams, including Chimney Hollow Dam, that has an asphaltic central core. And there's a couple of hundred of them in Europe where this technology was developed. This company, Wallow, was a sub to Barnard, who's had expertise in this type of asphaltic core construction in Switzerland. And what's interesting is you see they're careful to go over a crossing over the core so as to not contaminate the core with dust and rock and so on that could provide a seepage path through this low permeability central core. This is a time-lapse image of construction of the dam. We won't run the whole thing, but you can see the fill coming up. You can see the black central core. It's a very impressive project. Again, it was completed in under four years. This is a view of the saddle dam. So if you take the rim of the reservoir, there's some low-lying areas that had to be built up in this case to retain the water to the design pool elevation, maximum pool elevation. So another view of the haul operation from the quarry to the dam in these 777 wagons. This is exposed rock in the quarry area in the upstream reservoir of the dam that's apparently contributing to these uranium concentrations in the water that collects in the reservoir area. This is the spillway. The pump house. See the discharge pipes. And you have the inlet outlet works. It's on the upstream side of the dam. So again, very impressive project in terms of design and construction of the dam, how the material was processed on site. Uh, it'll remain to be seen how this potential issue with uranium contamination of the reservoir water will play out. The Northern Water seems completely confident that they'll be able to address this issue. I just think it's unusual that apparently this information wasn't made public sooner to allow the ultimate users. I mean, Northern Water is a wholesaler they don't treat the water, they don't deliver it to customers, but the water from this Chimney Hollow Reservoir was going to be used to supply to uh, water to over 800,000 people. So it's a significant project and very important. So they think in terms of uh, impacts with this uranium that, that the reservoir water over time will dilute these concentrations to acceptable limits. And as a fallback, they may need these uh, water delivery companies to provide additional processing uh, to deal with this uh, excess uranium concentration if it exists at the time that they plan to deliver water, which would probably be 2027 at the earliest based on the information that's been released so far. Well, let me know what you think in the comments section. I'm particularly interested in your thoughts. Is this to be expected that some major problem always comes up with a project or is it interesting that this news came out publicly a couple of months before the first filling. I'd like to know your thoughts on that. So with that, I wanna send a shout out to those of you who've contributed to buy me a coffee. That's an excellent way to support this channel. I also wanna send a shout out to channel members and those of you who've contributed to Super Thanks, additional great ways to support the channel. Also, I wanna mention a video that I did that relates uh, geotechnical engineering studies that were done to support the D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944. For whatever reason, the uh, YouTube algorithm didn't do me any favors on that and hardly anybody saw it or got any notifications about that. So there's a link to that video in the description. I'll throw a card up here. Uh, some devices don't show these, these cards, but anyway, I wanted to make that uh, video known to you all. I think it's very interesting. And if you have uh, interest in military history or geotechnical engineering or preferably both, this would be a great video for you. So thanks very much, everyone.